patience you have. I mean, yeah. so, so, told me how you do it. Did you do anything different on this version than the other one? Uh, this, this is my commission, by the way, that uh, I just got here at Chicago. He made me this billiard with horn, and right now we're just discussing how his approach to the uh, bowl is so different than American, for example, and general classic, and how he tapers more, and there's an oval kind of ring going on here. Uh, creating a uh, what do you call it a deeper cut in a little the shank. sharper a little sharper line. cut so that you can define the bowl a little bit better especially since it's gonna be blasted <laughs> I wanted to make the transition a little sharper so it wouldn't it wouldn't disappear you know what's what's special to me when this is a blast but the blast is not visible but it doesn't matter the silhouette of the shape is the powerful element here, it is. and it's what's it's what's doing the talking. And I didn't. I, I, it's pretty lightly blasted, since it's a smaller pipe. I didn't want the walls to be too thin, mm -hmm. so that's why I, I did a. It's not a super light blast, but it's uh, it's enough to see all the the rings and the details, but it's not too deep. What else do you want to explore in the bowl area of a billiard? What's gonna come next? Um, maybe a little more tilt. Canted forward? Yes, yes. With uh, so much definition here, of course, that's, yeah. the, that's the next easy thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, otherwise, it's, I, I'd say it's pretty straightforward. It is, but this is still under a very modern, quick take on the billiard. Yeah. The extra lines, the extra meat that you removed gives yes. it a very modern beautiful yes. profile and this is my pipe thank you thank so you much. so much i'm happy all right what else do you got uh, i saw you smoking this uh yeah board. that's uh you know that chris Osterio was making a whole bunch of these yeah i saw a photo of one of them this uh, is your new shop pipe right this is my new shop pipe it was intended to be my shop pipe from the beginning uh because i always you know i saw Bo smoking it in photographs and I always kind of like the shape. Uh, I don't think it's really beautiful, but it's not ugly. It's something like, I just, you know. Uh, something about it is appealing. It is. And when I have it now, holding it, it's very comfortable. So, mm -hmm. practi for, for practical reasons, it's a very nice pipe also. But I, I kind of, it's, it grows on me, you know, the, the look. Yeah. Uh, so this is my, my new shop pipe. <laughs> Using this shop pipe as an example, um, this reminds me very heavily of Bonord and let's call it Swedish design. Okay. That's family. Let's put this into the family of Swedish design for a minute. What other shape that you have here is the closest to, to that Swedish family out of your work right here? And this is his section of work right here. You're wrong, but I, I think they are from the 70s. He, he, uh, experimented a lot with the different uh, asymmetric shapes and uh, of course like you said I've been looking at some Japanese carvers as well. yeah yeah especially with this profile here that's exactly that's that's very heavily uh, not bow no exactly bow. He, he would probably have made it more round I guess you have um, this year not brought that much of your rounded essence and the pipe we're looking at right now is what I bought from him last year, which I was calling to you. I don't know why I'm using the word Swedish. It's because I'm just trying not to use the word Danish. Uh -huh. But uh, a Scandinavian line, these yes. longer lines, yes. the longer lines. This creating a bowl bottom that looks. Look, look at that. The the yeah. the, uh, the the oval esque nature. Heavily oval. That, that's not a normal bent billiard ball. No, no. But because you elongated this line, so what we were talking about a few weeks ago or a couple days ago was that your designs have been pushing more into the Danish category. The longer lines, like the bowl here, the longer lines have are not as much right now in your current work. Danish thought mm -hmm. is taking over. Yeah, I, this one is a little similar because uh, if you. If you see here, there's, um, instead of having the lowest point here, uh -huh. you move it back here. 
and with this pipe it's it's the a same. little bit the same uh -huh. and for me that that makes a, a very nice i call it a flow which is like the line going all along the pipe like this and it this sort of pushes the energy you know backwards it gives it a tension starting point and then release exactly so i think that you see that in a lot of danish pipes um, and maybe swedish as well yeah so um, and what you were talking about here you you mean these like two cheeks mm -hmm. that, yeah that makes it oval they're completely unexpected. When you look at it from the right or left profile, you yes. do not expect those big cheeks. No, no. But you did it in order to maintain the full volume roundness, right? From exactly, above. exactly. In, in, in order to have that design element maintained. Yeah, yeah. How did you get a and Where also normally I, somebody would do what? A brandy-ish kind of... Yeah, yeah. Thing. And it also makes the, the energy of the pipe go slightly backwards since... You have the, the, the lowest point here, mm -hmm. and on the, the width, you have the maximum point here. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not here in the middle of the bowl, it's slightly it's behind. It's slightly back, uh-huh. So it makes the flow go... The balancing point is right there, yeah. for both front and back. Exactly. You made a beautiful pipe, and I absolutely love, love this pipe. Thank you so much. Love it so much. Which which you pipe? That one? I bought this one last year. Yeah, this year this pipe looks very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, again, we're at Andreas Benwick's table. Uh, this is beautiful, actually. Uh, what do you call this shape? I would call it uh, a doublet, actually. Um, that's what I usually call <laughs> call my pipes <laughs> <laughs> that have that shape. Um, you have actually the same uh, tendency here. Uh huh. To get a slightly longer line instead of. Instead of keeping the material here, I, I removed it, so you get this sort of flow again with the lowest point here, slightly behind the center. Mm. How fantastic is that? I, it, I love it when we find small and simple yes. adjustments that drastically change the shape. And look at this, it looks like it has structure to it already. It's a new idea, but it looks so well executed. This is beautiful. I, I, we, we should understand this a little bit better because this is just fantastic this is this is a very modern view of yeah you call it a Dublin I don't, I don't even know what to call it uh, the shank is oval it's oval yeah and uh, it's got a pretty long shank but you know my, my one of my uh, philosophies in pipe making is not to put too many good ideas in one single pipe interesting but, because you know if you put too many good ideas, they will battle with each other. So instead, of you save some of the good ideas for later. Right? Yeah. And then you will have more attention on each good idea in every pipe. That's a very good lesson. I mean. That's a very good lesson for, I imagine, all pipe makers. Slow down a little bit. Focus on one thing and work and that, on and, that. And that single thing will have more attention. What's going on with this beauty? Um, Are we still live? This is, uh, I think I got some Japanese influence in this one. Mm -hmm. I have been looking a bit uh, on Goto pipes and uh, several others. Um, so I think I, I started by making a normal sitter with a flat top. Mm -hmm. um, intending to go the, something like this. Uh -huh. But then I decided to try and and uh, carve out this line here, the, the, the top. And also to level the, oops, this, instead of, of having it all tilted forward, uh -huh. to tilt this line here and then to, to have this one going in a more horizontal direction. So it gives this kind of, even though it's going like that, still it's going a little bit up. <laughs> That's it, yeah. I don't know if you down can and up, down yes. and up. Can you see that? Wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna go do it sideways like that. And also the shank has a asymmetric. These two lines. Oh yeah, are yeah, 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 yeah. This is a little bit higher. Do you guys see that eye. in there? Beautiful asymmetric shank. It's the small details that make pipes sing. Yes. 
This guy is phenomenal as well. Very big pipe. Very big. It's something uh, I haven't really done before. Um, maybe I have some Japanese influence in this one too. I'm not too sure. Maybe mm -hmm. you can <laughs> you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous grain, obviously. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, this was a uh, this is a fusion of Japanese, Danish, and the uh, bow Nord Sphinx action. Yeah, it's oh, actually this, this a, is a lot. This is a sort of blowfish. Normally, a blowfish would have this on the side. Uh huh. Uh huh. With, with this uh, carved out, the, it's concave, right? When mm -hmm. it goes in much, yeah. What's with the extra experimenting? You obviously feel so much more confident now to experiment, right? I, I have to, and I have to uh, force myself to uh, move in, in different directions and try new stuff. And, uh, Why do you have to force? So I can, uh, so I can, you know, eventually come up with my own style maybe, or just to, to try different things to see if I like it or not. Or, uh, I think experimenting is very important, and uh, at some points, maybe like once a year or so, I think it's good to just try something completely new. It might turn out good, it might not, uh, but anyway, the, in the long term, the result is going to be good because you will have new, uh, new influences in your work. And you're in a very good position, man. Sorry, what? And, and you also tried something. Yeah, yeah. So that's, the most tried important. Something. that's the most important thing. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, beautiful pipes, and this one is mine. <laughs> this one is mine, guys. This one is mine. Look at my little simple new beauty.